Yeah, and, and then the body is such a amazing healer, mm. isn't it? It just wants a chance. I remember Chris Judd said that to me like in 2010, like said, the body just wants a chance. <laughs> just, oh, it's, all it wants is a chance and then it'll just do the job. Really? Yeah. So he was quite he esoteric knew. in his thinking as well, was he? he? Like he just... He knew. Anyway, guys, it's Ninja and Aaron here again. Today, I want to do an updated version of our pubic bone, bone video. So around here is where I'm going to be working. Okay, so we've done um, a few of these videos before, but we still want to do an updated one. So um, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so that's the pubic bone, if you guys don't know. <laughs> so it's obviously the pelvis here. You've got the sacrum at the back here, but this is the front of your body here. So you can go and touch your pubic bone right now. So it's a bit of a taboo area. It's close to the you know private parts. So yeah, have a feel down there. Right at the bottom of your abs, you'll feel a really bony structure. So yeah, Ninja's gonna treat that today because this is implicated in uh, groin pain. Uh, I think yeah, in America, you call it um, sports hernia, athlete injury. Um, also, yeah, it's just related to hip issues as well. So basically, what's attaching here is your abs. And also underneath that, you've got your adductors or your groin muscles that come up in here. So it's like this tug and war battle. Um, so that's why athletes have some issues here. But Ninja's been the master of fixing this stuff over the last 20 years. He's gonna recount some awesome stories today. And I guess, um, yeah, it's a big part of the bodywork course where we teach you guys how to do bodywork and massage like us. This is one of the key things that we teach. So you're, you guys are gonna get a, a bit of a, like a look in today about what we actually do without giving away too many secrets, eh? There you go, Ninja, all yours. Yeah, cool. So can you just show me where? Yeah, yeah so right, yeah. that's right on top of the pubic yeah. bone there. Yeah, so I'm just gonna start right where he showed me so I can kind of start to feel where that um, drops off, the ridge. where it goes into his abs, so I can kind of get a bit of a, give it an idea. So, you know, we're going to start. Yeah. So, yeah, the reason I want, wanted to talk a few stories today was like, um, like this stuff is just not um, taught in school. And um, yeah, no one really knows how to do it. And like, I've been doing pubic bone stuff for 23 years, I think now, I've been going for nearly 25. So um, yeah, I just had a lot of success right from the start. And, and like Aaron was saying, you can you feel on your own pubic bone, you can kind of get a sense of what feels right and what feels therapeutic, what feels damaging and things like that. And um, yeah, I just really try to tune into that and um, try to really grind down some of this um, calcification from the scar tissue that people were having and, and just got guided by the people where they were experiencing pain and kind of just listened to that and then just went to work with them, not on them. So, and um, yeah, a lot of times people were out for quite often a year, something like this. And even though um, oh, an example was a guy from uh, Marcus Marigliani. G'day Marcus, if you're out there. He was in the AFL system, he played with um, Essendon and he was out for 12 months and he um, signed with a local club that I had an affiliation with was Heidelberg just in the northern suburbs of Melbourne and um, yeah I, I the president of their club sent Marcus in and he hadn't played for ages and we only had like I think four weeks before the season started and he ended up playing every game to cut a small you know cut the story short and he was best on ground in the grand final they won the grand final and stuff but I was actually you know, pushing off the walls and into his groin. <laughs> really? And, yeah, Pubic and bone or groin? Into the groin, groin. into the right end. But I was all around that, right into the side of the pubic bone. On the top here, I probably yeah. was doing elbows and stuff. But yeah, I, he was in a, a really good system, had access to all the, the best, you know, surgeons and doctors and, and physical therapists, physios, chiros and stuff. And yeah, they weren't changing anything, you know. Rest wasn't working, their rehab mm. wasn't working. Um, the injections didn't work. He had um, a stack of injections. Um, Cortisone and PRP, maybe? Or yeah, and, uh, and, but the hands-on work was the thing that made the difference. So within four weeks, I changed a 12-month injury, got him back playing. Uh, and he was a real power athlete as well. So um, he was just really um, kicked the ball hard and tackled hard, jumped high and things like that. Lots so, of stress happening here. Yeah, right? so um, yeah, it shows you just the power of um, being really good with your hands. And if I can go back even further, um, 2004, I got a job um, with the Western Bulldogs, which was a, a professional football club, you know, Aussie rules football club here in Melbourne. So um, 
yeah, they got me in and I, they gave me a six week trial and I went in with all this confidence. I was only like five or six years into my career, but I just knew that I could fix things. And um, they had three guys there with OP um, and they were kind of were in doubt for the next season. One guy in particular they thought was gonna to have to have 12 months off was Bob Murphy. And um, with Bob, I had fixed him before Christmas. So within that six week trial period, he was back to full training and didn't miss the training after. Do you remember if it was groins or pubic bone? For he him? actually had pubic bone. So I remember that I was hitting a spot like where I am right now, and you, and he was feeling that go right up towards his belly button, yeah. like pyramidalis. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd be going in there, and I had my, my thumbs was my main thing, but I was taking my mox ring, and I was mox ring their pubic bone. I remember mox ring the pubic bone, and um, referral pain went up. The yeah. pyramidalis and just we knew bang, bang I'd had the the Made magic the spot that was going to create the change because it really resonated with him yeah that's the that's the thing that we've been looking for so um, it was just through exploration and and giving the person permission on the table to to give us the information because they are the greatest resource they are the you mm. know they are the expert on their body they know so they can kind of intuitively tell what needs to happen for a change to take place and yeah, for the healing to happen. So, yeah, we've always kind of um, humbled ourselves, the magnificence of the human body, and to their innate knowing. You, you know what it's going to take, you know, and, and the body's always given us signs and signals, and the symptoms are, you know, telling us that we've, that crime has happened of the body, you know, injury has happened, or we've, you know, we've eaten wrong, or we haven't moved, or, you know, we've got an emotional kind of block that we need we need to address our body's just given us information telling us to have a look at something so um if we ignore that it just kind of keeps on getting more and more you know we keep it when we're on the right path and we start doing the things that are going to get it better cleaning you know mm. organizing things like that things start to change things start to get better so yeah so that's what we're all about is um yeah giving people that power and yeah I've, I've been loving it, so yeah. and, it's, and I think that the other the big fish that we got was um, mm. Mac Hollands. So Aaron and myself doing this exact same video, <laughs> probably about five years ago, I think, because Mac saw it. 2017, at, 20, it was like six years ago, I think. Yeah. Oh, maybe 2018. Yeah. yeah, 2018 roughly. So five five years ago, then Mac saw it, probably six months after we had it out, and he was sitting. He was a long term injury as well. Had his problems in right in this area here, hadn't seen anybody else around working on the pubic bone from working up into the groin and um, lower abs and things like that where we're working. And um, yeah, he, he just knew this was what would help him. So um, yeah, a couple of video calls later, he was actually getting better, wasn't he? Boy? Well, yeah, he, we Ask kind of, because we couldn't get there, obviously, because he was in Philly, we were in Melbourne. Yeah, we were teaching his uh, partner, Jen, to do it on him. And yeah, they made, she made some crazy breakthroughs herself, just us guiding her, which was amazing. So once we got to America, the job was already on the, on the way, which was yeah, great. The ball was so, rolling. Yeah, the it? ball was rolling. So yeah, it's amazing what you can do. Like, And it's not... It's not rocket science, what, what we're teaching here in a way, isn't it? Like it's very intricate and very detailed in its own little way. But the fact that we were able to teach a, a novice, in no, in, you know, his partner, Jen, had no background in massage. Yeah. We could guide her to be able to create some healing for an NFL player. It shows anyone can do this. Yeah. And I think that's why people have been so drawn to our course. Because we've had a lot of people that have done our course that aren't even in the industry. They just see how great our lifestyle is, how rewarding it is that we're able to help people and, and, and they, they want a bit of it, you know? So, yeah, don't think that we're just limiting the people that do our, our, our course to people that are already in the industry because, yeah, we just want people that want to take a dive into this stuff and, and see value in it and, and want to give it on to people, you know? Because we, we think it's the best job in the world doing this stuff when you can have, um, have such an impact on someone's lives, so, yeah. One thing I'm just thinking about while you were talking there, man, was like it's your science guy and I'm kind of art yeah, guy. Or, yeah. or, or what I kind of probably like, I think this is an art. Mm. But like art and science have got to have a dance, yeah. you know, to kind of, to get the resonation across. There's something but, happening here yeah. that, that has yeah. an explanation to mm. it, you know. Yeah. It is magic, but there's, yeah. a, there's a reason why it's working as well. So yeah. I think the mixture of both, it, it uh, I think... 
people either fit into one bucket, but it's good to know the other side of things too. You know, yeah. it's uh, yeah, when they need each other yeah. to to be be to be a concept. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I just knew in my heart, you know, when I started pushing into my own body and feeling certain things and then things would disappear, I, I knew this was a good thing. Mm. I just knew that it would, if it could happen on me, it could happen on you. You know, it could happen on all these different people that were coming in and frustrated and, and stuck. And I just needed to kind of get things going so it could um, flow again. So that, that was the real basic concept that I had. I just knew that, you know, this, this stuff was stuck it was frozen, it was traumatized, it was scarred up, all those different kinds of words. And the way that you remedy that, you gotta get it moving. So you gotta break things down, you gotta understand what's going on, you know, mm. and you don't understand things unless you, unless you actually dive into them and um, try and break them down and, and nut it out. So um, yeah, and, and then the body is such a amazing healer. Mm. Isn't it? It just wants a chance. I remember Chris Judd said that to me, like in 2010. Like, said, the body just wants a chance. <laughs> just, oh, it's, all it wants is a chance, and then it'll just do the job. Really? Yeah. So he was quite he esoteric knew. in his thinking as well, was he? he? Knew. Like he just he knew. in what in relation to what issue did he have? Oh, I suppose he just had all these shoulder injuries, and he had um, OP stuff as well. He, he he kind of had his OP under control by the time he he got to me, but um, but I was. Um, there were still plenty of other things that were compensatory that um, he got me to work on because he knew his body really well. So he just get me to work on a patch on his calf for, you know, 45 minutes, you know, things like that, or just his, a certain section of his neck. So... Because yeah. he just knew, did he? Like, yeah. fuck, he must have been dialed in something chronic. Eh? He was cool. He taught me a lot of stuff, you know, and he, he's like a, a greyhound, the big rib cage, <laughs> a small belly and just big ass, you know, <coughs> so a just a, a super athlete, a power athlete. He still owes you a race too. He's an AFL football legend here in Australia. Yeah. Two Brownlows? Two Brownlows or one Brownlow? Two Brownlows, yeah. Brown -lows. Carlton and West Coast. So one flag. People in Victoria and like the southern states of Australia know Auss Aussie rules football, so he's a quite a famous name. So like it'd be a, the equivalent in America of winning, I don't think there's a player of the year award, but yeah, like I guess twice twice running the best player in the whole competition and one Super Bowl winner. So he's, yeah, yeah, legend. Yeah. Across two clubs as well. I suppose basketball, they have more MVPs, MVPs thing, and yeah. stuff. So he'd be a bit of a LeBron or something, wouldn't he? Or Hmm. He's a generational kind of player, probably yeah. not as not as good as Ablett LeBron, or something, or yeah. yeah, probably not LeBron status, but nah. he's right up there. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, any other stories you want me to kind of pull I think out? You hit it all, bro. I yeah. think you hit them all. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to want to learn how to how to fix anything, because yeah, we'll dial into our course, yeah. do an interview with us. And uh, yeah, let's get it happening. Yeah, yeah we're seven weeks, lives. seven weeks out from our next intake in August when this video was filmed. So yeah, if you're watching this in the future, just hit us up. We do two a year. They run for 14 weeks. Um, you get you know access to 60 hours of bodywork content for life. But the best part of it is you get access to Ninja and I for 14 weeks, which includes a 90-minute webinar every week, and uh, like you know, I guess basically like personal coaching from us for that period too. And then it unlocks access to in-person stuff with us too, whether we go overseas or you come to Australia here, right? So it's the best. The results we're getting are awesome. We're changing people's lives and um, it's changing our life too because teaching is, is awesome for us too. So hit us up, see if you'd be a good fit and uh, it will get you in. Keep the art alive. Thanks, guys. Done.